what are the challenges now in terms of SEO? Is just saturation, just market saturation? Uh, I think misinformation. And so getting clients, organizations, people that need SEO and need this pain point, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there and we got to cut through that noise. Uh, in my opinion, the average SEO agency or digital marketing just says they do SEO, in my opinion, they don't do SEO, at least not the way we define it. And that's just my opinion. Hey, I'm Armando Leduc, producer, film actor, and owner of Leduc Entertainment. I have chosen a life off the beaten path and wanted to find others that are doing the same. Spaghetti on the Wall is a show based on all of the years that I've thrown spaghetti on the wall and nurtured what's stuck. We will share fun stories, ideas, tips, tricks, and more. Welcome to Spaghetti on the Wall. What's up? What's up? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on when you're catching this beautiful podcast, Spaghetti on the Wall. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Brian Hong. You like that? I like that. I like sound effects. It's awesome. (laughs) It's so funny. I have all of these other things. Like, uh, I don't ever use it. Kramer with the... Yeah, I don't ever use it, though. I I just, because I'm so focused, I forget to... (laughs) Oh, well. Infintech, Infintech. Infintech Designs. Infintech Designs. So, Brian, you are the master at SEO, and you're actually someone that practices what they preach, which is awesome, right? So, talk to me about SEO. Talk to me about this whole marketing, um, because there's a lot to unpack. I want to talk about where we're at right now in 2023, Mm -hmm. where you think it's going to go, how is AI becoming a factor in all of this stuff? So, um, so let's just talk about where you're from, where you know how, how you got your start and all of that good stuff. Sure. Born in Washington. Hold. Uh, you're gonna need to come. Oh, you see born how in, there born you in Washington go. State. Right left there uh, as a kid. Moved here in New Orleans. So this is home. I went to grammar school, high school, college. Created my company here. My wife, et cetera, so on. Uh, the company started because in 2000. I pretty much kind of got a car I couldn't afford, a 2001 Volkswagen Jetta, a limited edition. It was the first car I ever got, and broke college kid, uh, partied too hard at LSU, came back home to New Orleans, started working with my parents who owned an insurance agency. Long story short, pretty miserable. Working 80 hours, barely making ends meet, uh, trying, doing everything I can to support this car that I couldn't afford. And then it was then where I said, there's gotta be another way to make money. Had a friend said I made some money online. This is back in 2000. I'm like, what does that mean? Did some Google searches. Uh, I said, okay, well, let me try to make money online. So I never really picked his brain on how did you make money online? He just said I made money online. That seed was planted. So my first venture was trying to figure out how can I sell stuff on eBay. And that began with selling information. And so I was doing insurance during the day. And the first piece of info product I sold was on eBay was where to buy uh, CDs online. This is back when people bought CDs online. And so I would just go do Google searches. Create when a was that? 1985? <laughs> um, I would do Google searches and create a list on a PDF document, go to eBay, list it saying, here's the best places to buy DVDs and CDs, music and videos online. Uh, these sites have them cheap and they have a great selection. And I sold it for $14 and 99 cents. And I did it and I said, this is, you're not buying anything but pure data. And I did it, I'm like, oh my God, someone bought this. And then that was like the light bulb moment. Mm. Like, I just made 15 bucks. I made $15 because I gave someone a piece of information they're willing to pay for. Huh, how do I automate this? How do I scale it? How do I do more? So I just made more listings. You start split testing the pricing. You start split testing the ad copy. I'm like, okay, how do I automate it? So I created an autoresponder. When you complete the purchase, email this email, and it automatically sends them the list. Now I experienced passive income for the first time. Nice. And then $300 became $600. $600 became $1,000. At the peak, I was making like $2,000 a month, and I felt like I won the lottery. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, my car note's paid for. I did it because my car note was $400. I'm like, I did it. Okay, let me do the same thing. So I did the same thing for purses. Best place to buy purses, luxury purses. I'm like, what else can I do? DVDs, purses, that's all I could think of. And so at the peak, I was making like a little bit less than 5K. And I'm like, there's something here, the internet. You can make money on the internet. And that's where I started, I circled back. So to finish that, like it it dropped. Like I I didn't keep on making that amount of money. The marketing was saturated. For whatever reason, I just wasn't doing as well. But I got a taste of it. Circled back to my friend, how you making money? I did something called affiliate marketing. What is that? Went to Google, searched for some stuff, found a conference in New York called uh, Search Engine Strategies, thrown by Jupiter Events, took out a credit card loan. I was a college kid, broke, in debt, 
over 100 grand in debt. What do I have to lose? I got a credit card. I lied about how much money I made, a 15K Discover card, charged it, went there, crossed my fingers, and that's all she wrote. That's how it began. And that's, that's how you learned. That's how I learned. Uh, from that conference. What was the conference mm -hmm. called? It was called Search Engine Strategies, thrown by Jupiter Events. Mm -hmm. And this was all about what, SEO and... It was all, yeah, I'd say SEO, search engines. It was all about search engines, SEO being one of them. But yeah, so like the ad tech side, the content side, but pretty much search engines. So it was sponsored by Google, Yahoo, all the who's who of search engines were there. Uh, and that, how that much was, was that? Uh, how much was that conference? I think that was about three thousand um, dollars. And then, you know, the plane ticket and New York hotel pricing was really high. Went to Radio Shack, bought a recorder. Back Radio when, Shack. <laughs> back oh, when, back man. when that existed. Back when people use recorders. And I just tried to be a sponge, stuck a recorder into the table. I'm like, I need to be a sponge and absorb as much information as possible. And that's what I did. Dude, conferences are just killer, man. I went to uh, the social media marketing world in San Diego uh, a few months ago just the networking and the knowledge to come back and then start implementing change the game. Yeah. So yeah, if you're out there, go to conferences and start learning. So, yeah. so this was when, what, what year is this? Cause you're talking radio shack. Yeah, this was 2000. Yeah. yeah. 2001 was kind of the beginning of my SEO journey. So at that point, I mean, it's, you know, so you've seen every iteration of, of, uh, of how this works. So I'm sure you, you know, you've gotten really, really good at what you do, obviously, since 2000. We're 23 years of doing this, man. It's changed a lot. I mean, Google was just being born. And back then, the leader was Yahoo. So it was all about Yahoo, less about Google. And today, it's all about Google. So yes, it was, it was definitely a different landscape and different process and different everything. It was easier, to be honest with you. <laughs> Way easier. So what's the, um, what are the challenges now in terms of SEO? Is just saturation? Just market saturation? Uh, I think misinformation. And so getting clients, organizations, people that need SEO and need this pain point, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there and we got to cut through that noise. Uh, in my opinion, the average SEO agency or digital marketing just says they do SEO, in my opinion, they don't do SEO, at least not the way we define it. And that's just my opinion. Well, how do you define it? Uh, so most of the times, not always, the average agency I hear, I'm doing SEO, it's mostly I'm doing content. I'm going to post on your website. Right? They're not really optimizing. But SEO is, to me, broken up in four categories. You have technical SEO, on-page SEO, off-page SEO, and local SEO. And each of those buckets have different needle movers and different processes. And I don't feel like the average agency focuses on all of those buckets. But you do. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit, and without going into, going into mega detail, but mm -hmm. like what's the difference between, between these four? So like technical SEO could be uh, site speed. It could be how your site is structured, crawl a bit of your website, Google's ability to come to your website, absorb and collect information, uh, them scanning certain pages. You can control that with a well-optimized technical SEO plan. And then on-page SEO, that's kind of easier for people to understand. That's like the words on your page. The words on your page, your content, um, linking of your page, uh, structuring of your content, where that content exists, uh, how each piece of content links to another piece of content, that's kind of all on-page SEO. Off-page SEO, that would be someone else linking to you. Uh, that could be a guest post link, that could be a contextual link, that could be a Facebook link, it could be a Yelp link, it could be a link on YouTube in the description area. There are many, many different types of ways to get links. The arguably gold standard of link is a contextual link that is topically relevant, uh, that is conversational. And so like, we call them anchor text. If you had like a big block of paragraph and you highlighted a word or a phrase that aligned with the page you're directing to, that's what I'm talking about is making that congruent. That, that would be off page SEO. Cool. And then what's the fourth one? Oh, local SEO. And so local SEO is when you do a search, you'll typically see four ads at the top, three at the bottom, and then you'll see a map pack. You'll see like Google reviews, an address, a map, a phone number, that area right there. That would be local SEO where the rules are a little bit different to get positioning there than to get everything below it. Below it would be organic SEO, above it would be paid search. And so for that, it's just a different process, different signals you need to build to penetrate that area. I'm coming to you, mm -hmm. right? And I'm a personal injury attorney. And I'm like, hey, I need SEO, right? Because everybody's telling me I need SEO, right? What's, what are the, um, I guess, what are the first steps in yep. working with you? Yep. So first of all, I would say the average company that comes to us, it's pretty rare. They're saying I need SEO. 
I get most of my SEO deals by doing their website. So I rank for SEO, New Orleans, and all those terms, but really our greatest lead magnet is if you're building a website, you're probably building it because you want to generate leads. And sure. So I'm getting to them before it because they don't really know SEO. They can't touch the field. It's a harder conversation to have. With that being said, easier today. It was much harder in 2000. So really web design is a conversation. And so really it's not so much I need SEO, it's I need leads. And so it's usually the conversation is there's a pain point and then I'm, I may pick SEO, but I'm picking out of my list of services. I'll be a solutionist. I'm like, okay, if this is your pain point, SEO can be one of the things to help us close the gap. Also social media marketing, also content marketing, also online reputation management. It may be also conversion rate optimization. And so really we'll pick from our vault of activities and SEO just happens to be one of the leading activities we, we more often suggest. Gotcha. All right. And so how, how, do you guys have like packages, like the Lamborghini packages where yep. it's all like, you know, we're doing everything for you? Yeah. So it'll really be almost all customized based on your needs, your goals. You want to crawl, walk or run your customer avatar, number of services you're promoting, et cetera, so on. So it's not really a cookie cutter approach. It's let me listen to what you need, your pain points. We'll have a discovery session and then we'll sculpt a completely customized campaign based on that, that conversation. Are you trying to scale your business now or what's that? What's that look like here in the next three um, to five years? My biggest focus is to, I obviously want to grow the agency. Definitely. I always want to grow, but more so my shift has been trying to grow brands that I own. And that's been my goal because if I own the brand, you can't get rid of me and I'm building our dream instead of your dream. Sure. And so that's been a focus trying to uh, shift my revenue stream and make most of my money from company owned brands versus just being an agency. What are your brands? So I have these kind of, uh, like JVs, these joint ventures. And so construction is one of them. So I'm a partner construction company. I'm a partner in a mortgage company. Uh, and we have some pending projects working on men's health, like anti-aging that think like Viagra, semi-glutide, Cialis, peptides, hormone replacement, I'm working on a solar project that's solar installation, solar panels for home and businesses. I got another side deal for solar financing. I also do solar lead gen. And so I'll create companies and find partners in each of those categories if, they're, if it makes you know, synergistic sense. If you're doing something I can't. So it may be an in, an introduction, you may own a solar company. I'm like Shark Tank, but I give you a marketing injection instead of cash injection. I'm your growth lever. I love this. Let's talk more about this. Because I'm, I'm, I'm super interested in, in, in this as well, just personally. So, um, yeah, I always had the idea because, like, sometimes, you know, you got these, these, these companies that come through, and I'm like, man, you guys have a great business, but obviously you're missing, you know, you're missing that, that marketing component, you know, and possibly the conversion component. Mm -hmm. So if I can come in, get leads in the door, and I can help you convert, now we have, now we have a business. Yep. So how are you structuring these deals? Like, are you, you know, asking for I, profit share? And yeah, it's kind of all across the board, but more often <clears throat> the conversation begins, I want an equal seat at the table. And so equal partnership. That's not how it always ends up. Sure. But that's how the but conversation you ask. begins, right? That's where my head is always at. Yeah. Uh, so it worked out construction side. I got an equal seat at the table. The mortgage side, uh, I don't have a full equal seat, but I'm comfortable with uh, the profit share that I have and the equity stake I have. Uh, and the, all the other ones, they're going to start off as, you know, these are kind of pending items. It's something I'm working on. Nothing solidified, but I'm working on the solar, the solar, two different solar deals, a solar financing, the men's health. Uh, those are the other categories I'm working on to expand the kind of the portfolio. I love this idea. I love this concept. So how are you, when you're, when you're becoming you know, a partner in this business, mm -hmm. what are your, what, what are you bringing to the table besides marketing? Are you getting involved in operations and everything like that too? If I can, like if I can be a part of, so I guess my strength, what do I bring to the table? I'm your marketing lever. I make your brand product or service. I make it loud. I make it loud in front of people that are interested in your brand product or service. So I'm top of the funnel marketing right? And the top of the funnel is the awareness, but I'm also middle of the funnel, the consideration desire and consideration desire would be kind of user journey, your website, turning more visitors into customers. Mm -hmm. So really I I'm just the growth lever is get in front of more people and the people you can get in front of convert more of them into customers, make it trackable, make attribution, make it measurable. That's what I do. I love that. I love that, man. 
Wilson, you writing this down? Because this is this is gonna be this is gonna be the uh, this is gonna be the next step for sure. Because like yeah, I mean you know, partnerships with with businesses that are good, but that need that that spark. How are you? So let's talk about that. Are you are you finding the 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 businesses, the businesses are finding you. They all come to me. They're all coming to <laughs> they you. They all come to me. Every gotcha. Time. Almost every single one of those deals. I have some like kind of, I, I guess, intentional seeds I'm planting, hoping, hoping it sprouts into them coming to me. But at the end of the day, they all come to me. <laughs> Got, so they found you somehow, right? Well, it, so like, for instance, the, so all of them, almost all of them are former clients of mine. And those clients, because that's proof of concept. Trust is built. They know what I can do. Then the conversation evolves for the next project or if they want to scale up is, you know, I plant the seed. Well, we could scale up. You could pay me this or you give me some skin in the game and you could not pay me this and I'll make it based on pure performance. So it's a win-win. And then that's how it kind of starts unfolding. I love that. Do you have a, um, I'm sure you got a business and tax guy, tax I do. attorney. Yeah, I got the same lawyer I use on every single one of these deals. He's local here in New Orleans. And, you know, by now I just, he knows what to do. I just send it on and we got another deal and he just kind of goes through the motions. How hard is it to convince these folks to go into business with you? Um, I've been pretty fortunate. It's been kind of easy. <laughs> I mean, I want to say it's hard, but I'm like trying to think like it hasn't really been in terms of like agree to work with me. I, I don't I haven't put my finger on exactly what I'm doing right because I, I would do more of it to try to figure out how do I get, get more businesses. But I don't know. They're all saying yes, and they're all coming to me, and it's not a lot of friction in, in convincing because, again, they're coming to me, right? right? They're usually pitching in – not always. Like, I'll, I'll, they'll come up with the idea and say, well, what about this version? What if we have another version of what we're talking about, but you have a lower upfront risk? I assume some of that risk, but I get a bigger payout on the back end. That's mutually beneficial because you have a lower barrier to entry and you're, I'm only going to make money if this works. So why wouldn't you do this, right? I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm confident that I can make this work, but I need a piece of the outcome. And so, then they're like, yeah, yeah, let's go. So yeah, so I just did the real estate, actually got a bunch. I'm part of a pending one, an AI content one that kind of happened like that. I got a real estate project I'm working on where I get, uh, it's Florida real estate too, so it's like really expensive houses. So every deal now, I I'm trying to create a version of, because really, I'm just doing the same thing as a client. It's a little more work. I'm essentially kind of a fractional chief marketing officer. Right. And in exchange of doing that, you're going to give me a piece of your company, a royalty, or some type of license deal. That's kind of how I work them. How are they? And, and so it's all tracked on, on I guess, the, the, the tax, the taxes and all. Are you getting paid quarterly, monthly? So some of them every two weeks, some of them every month, some of them, you know, all across the board. It just kind of depends on the deal. But more often than... More often, it's it bare minimum, at least every month. The construction's every two weeks. Yeah. I love that. Fuck, dude, so that's great. End game is sell it, flip it, and have an exit. You know, that's the end game. Is that how you met Joel? I met, no, I didn't. I met Joel because of my brother. Hey, Joel, how's it going? Joel Duran. <laughs> I saw that podcast. No, I met him because of my brother. My brother kickboxed with him. That's how I initially first met him. That's cool, man. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm just getting, I'm, I'm just getting uh, a little bit more knowledge in this whole you know, exit strategy and business valuations and, you yeah. know, mergers and acquisitions and stuff. So I, I like the concept of, you know, hey, if we're going to help you build the business, my my only thing is like how much time is this is this taking away from, you know, from you and like mm -hmm. being able to do whatever, whatever it is you want. Because, I mean, you know, running a business is. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty systemized, productized. We have a very detailed SOP. I have an amazing leadership team. I have a six person leadership team that uh, allows me to do more with less. And so uh, my biggest bottleneck, I, I would say, is plugging you into my system. The system is you know, very systemized, productized. We have a great SOP and a great team. But uh, I do 100% of my sales, right? Uh, it's, it's all me. I, I am the bottleneck is having a conversation with you, having that discovery session, building that initial blueprint, and then plugging you in. That's the bottleneck. Plugging them in. And so where you stop is once the lead has been con uh, converted into a, into, a pro uh, into a client. I wouldn't say stop, but way less time involvement for me. Because then it's just like weekly meetings with my team, <clears throat> thumbs up, thumbs down. 
uh, it's really kind of blueprinting, right? Overall big picture. We need more of this activity, less of this. Here's an efficiency. How do we do this better? Or what do we need to change? What is a different perspective? And what are these barriers and how do we overcome them? Stuff like that. How do you like bounce? That. <laughs> how do you bounce if, 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 the, if the business owner, I mean, obviously, you know, the business owner that you guys know, there, there's some trust and credibility there, obviously. But like, what if there's like, have you experienced a, a situation where you're like, guys, you know, I, I'm bringing all of these leads in. They're not converting. What's the problem? And it just doesn't get fixed. And you're like, yeah. you know, do you have an exit strategy there? Is that built into the contract? Kind of. Uh, yes and no. And so a lot of times the proof of concept is not always, but sometimes it's built by, uh, hey, let me just start giving you some business and see what happens. And so I'll cur- I have these, like my side hustle, I just build webs. I do digital real estate. So I'm always building, always building real estate, uh, for websites, tackling niches, generating traffic. Cause to me, those leads, I know I can monetize them. I just need something to monetize. And so I'll be in a position where let's say construction company, Hey, Mr. Construction company, you want roofing leads. Let's do a JV partnership, you know, all that, but you want to have the confidence. I can do what I say. I want to have the confidence. You can turn opportunities into closed deals. Let's date before we get married. What does dating mean? Let me just send you some leads. Let's see what happens. Let's go through the motions as if we were partners. And so I'll get a sense of things by doing that. Because I have, I have like, you know, three or 400 different websites I bring with me across multiple different categories and niches. And so I can, I have the, the privilege to do that is you want roofing leads? Okay, I can flip a switch. I'll give them to you today. Let's see what happens. Let me, I need my proof of concept. You need your proof of concept. That's one way of closing that gap. And you're not charging them for that dating period or are you charging them? It kind of depends. Uh, for the example I gave about construction, no charge is I'm just absorbing that cost. You know, I, I just spend the cost. I, I look at his cost of doing business to get that uh, kind of partner in place. So that's like your marketing cost. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And it's probably cheaper for you because you already have, you know, you don't have the upcharge of, of doing it, you know, of yeah. outsourcing it. It's just, I mean, it's kind of, it's almost the same thing as having a client. Like I can have a client or I can have skin in the game. Yeah, it's a little more work having skin in the game. There's more conversations, more meetings, but there's a much higher upside, right? You get a piece on the exit. You, you know, when things are good, they're great too. You, you get more compensation as well. But why not just have, if it's almost the same as having a client, why don't I just get equity stakes in companies, right? And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take all my existing resources, all my knowledge, I look at it back of my days of waiting tables, right? It was a game of how many like dishes can I make with the same ingredients? That's what restaurants do to prevent spoils. I'm just doing the same thing. How many different revenue streams can I create with my same ingredients? And that's what I'm doing. The low, medium, high, the JB portfolio. I'm just, you know, selling uh, individual services I have. So productizing it, I'm selling them as packages. I'm tackling the wholesale market, the direct consumer market, the enterprise market. I'm then tackling, give me a piece of your company market. And that's why, look, this is why I do podcasts, right? <laughs> like, this is why I do podcasts, right? Because, like, you never know what you're going to hear to the, the idea that just, like, changes the entire game, right? Because sometimes, sometimes it's just a mindset thing. Sometimes it's just an introduction of an idea that you have may, may have thought about but wasn't really like, huh, how does that, you know, how does that really operate Because I have a friend of mine in Miami that, you know, that is doing something like this where he has, you know, he's getting, um, he's getting money for, for, for some of it, but I don't know if he has skin in the game. I don't know if he's asked for actual, you know, ownership, but I mean, this sounds like the way. It makes it more fun too. (laughs) I mean, this, yeah, no, for sure. But like, yeah, if I have, you know, if I got stake in, you know, in the construction company, if I got stake, like haunted history tour, you know what I mean? Where I'm like, dude, he's sitting on he's sitting on a hundred thousand emails. Oh, really? From you know, from all, everybody that has like come through, and I'm like, and I'm, I'm like, Sydney, have you? What have you done? Well, nothing really, you know. But I mean, he's making enough money, so he's not really yeah. thinking about that. But I'm like, y- you're sitting on potentially like multi million dollars, you know, in whether they're, you know, maybe they're buying books, you yeah. know, merchandise, you know, the whole, the whole nine. And I'm like, 
be great to be like, hey, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. Yep. You know, um, let's, you know, if you give me some ownership, then yeah. I'll just, I'll rock and roll. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it really churn this thing out. So that's crazy. We love opportunities like that. I heard you say he has a hundred thousand person email list. If we had an organization, we would approach. What, what would I do if I had that opportunity to talk to that person? He said a hundred thousand emails. Then I would say, what if you gave me that hundred thousand emails and you only pay me if I turn it into money? But yeah, you pay me nothing. If you don't create any additional revenue stream, you pay me nothing. But if I turn that into money, I get a piece of the outcome. So yeah, there's no risk. Yeah, I would definitely do that with that client. Yeah, I'm de- <laughs> That's mind blowing for sure. Cause I'm like, I'm sitting on like, you know, all of these, all of these different clients that are, you know, that are reaching out and they're like, man, you know, we could really do some things, but in that, and that's the sale, right? It's all like, Hey, look, you can either pay me for it or, you know, give me some, give me some, uh, give me some ownership, yep. not pay it here. And then it's all performance based because yeah. like I, I can guarantee that we're going to that we're going to grow your business. Mm-hmm. And if I can get some stake in it. Yeah. Holy crap. You'll you be know a little what I mean? more motivated to grow it too. hundred percent. Right? got skin in the game. Yeah, yeah. man. And I hadn't even really fun. thought about, you know, that in particular. You know what I mean? Like that makes so much more sense. So thank you for the idea. <laughs> sure. I'm running with it. It's, <laughs> it's yours. It's, Take it. You can have it. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this. Is there anybody in the space that, um, did you learn this from somebody else or is this just like a trial and error sort of thing? I don't, I don't know. I just kind of did it. it. It was born because actually it started with a landscaping company. Uh, this guy, the same guy also stole a lot of money from me but it was a learning lesson. <laughs> but it started with this guy, uh, a landscaper, and uh, I launched a campaign with him, and it was brand new. And like in month number three, he said, I need to cancel. He's going through a divorce. And from my perspective, I'm like, man, this campaign's starting to get traction. Like, I, I think I'm, a re- I'm about to start generating some good leads. And I'm like, you know, long story short, I'm like, why are you shutting things down? It got personal. And he's like, I'm going through a divorce. It's just, I don't have the money. I'm like, okay, so it's, if that's the problem, what if, let me just throw a bone out there. What if you kept it alive, you stopped paying me, but you give me 50% of your company and I'll just support all the marketing. Because if that's the problem, paying me, you can do the work, you can do everything else, but you're just in a financial bind. If I absorb that risk, let's become partners. By the way, how much revenue are you doing per year? And he told me he's doing $60,000 a year. I'm like, oh, so if I get you to 120, you're right back where you started. And in my head, I'm like, I can definitely blow it. If you can close deals, I'm confident I can give you enough opportunities that will blow us way past 120. So we went mm. zero to about a little bit less than 1 million in one year. And so that was where the idea was born. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm on to something. And then we went 1 million to 4.8 million in about three years. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. And that was kind of, I think I'm on to something here. How do I go replicate this for other industries? But that's kind of how it was born. Have you done a course <laughs> teaching people how to do this? I don't know. You're the third person to ask me that. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't know. I haven't thought about it and I don't even know. I'm, I think it's a skill in being an educator. I don't know if I have that skill. I don't know what skills you totally. need. Totally. No, don't you know. don't. No, you don't. Look, let me tell you something. I, 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 I have, I have two courses um, and I'm about to make um, two more, but let me help you create a course. Yeah. And in so doing, I will, you'll, be teaching me right <laughs> and then in the in the teach we'll record you educating me and that'll be your course at the beginning like it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be perfect mm-hmm. we just you know we'll we'll record everything i'll ask you all kinds of questions we'll figure out like a table of contents yeah. you know and then as you get more and more questions and then we can be like okay that that becomes another module and like, and more, you know the more people that that and, and you can obviously market the shit out of it you know but like I don't think, like, cause I don't, I don't want to waste time running into walls. You know what I mean? Like, I love this guy. I love this idea, uh-huh. but I would love to know like the mistakes you you've made so that I don't make the same, yeah. you know? And then like, how, how can I like add gasoline to it so that I'm doing the things that I need to do mm-hmm. the fastest, most efficient way so that I can become profitable and not turn this into another opportunity yeah. that, you know, that just takes up time and doesn't really 
you know, create profit. Cause that's the thing too. Right. And I'm, I'm totally on board with like mentorship and trying to like make that happen. So anyway, we'll have a conversation. Yeah. You don't have to Always talk have about to it now, but, talk. Yeah. but dude, I, I think having a course like this, cause I take it, you know, in a heartbeat, you know, cause I think, I, I think it's great, especially for marketing companies that are good at what they do, mm-hmm. you know, and they, and if they're, you know, if they can actually get people to come to the door yeah. and they can get the phone ringing, then yeah, then you had, then you could partner with, you know, a kind of companies and, and, and man, create kind of this a, passive income. That's just, it's a no brainer for the other oh side. Boy. I just have to find the right people to trust. Right. It's a huge trust factor. Totally. You're, you're, it's like getting married at first sight. <laughs> you're like, Hey, let's yeah. have a company. I've never really, I don't really know you too well, but let's have a company together. That's kind of what I'm doing. Yeah, right. no, for sure. But like, I mean, how long, how long before you make that decision? Every one has been so different. Like right now I'm starting a lawn care business that happened pre-existing client, but it evolved. So like that was probably three months. I've been knowing this guy maybe three, four months. And now all of a sudden we have a lawn care mowing business, landscaping, right? And so like uh, another one, let's see here. These are pending ones. Uh, AI content project, been knowing him less than a year. You know, I'm in a mastermind group that could be best case scenario that evolves and I get an equity stake in that. Uh, let's see, men's health. I've been knowing that guy for about three months. <laughs> so these are like new things. Talk to me about this men's health business. That one I'm pretty excited about. And so that started off an existing client. He owns a IV therapy business. So like uh, pretty much I'm drunk, fix me. That's the hangover, right? The sure, hangover sure, yeah. cure, that's their thing. And so uh, he's a really sharp guy. Number one, I really like the guy, which makes it easier and more exciting to do business with someone you like. Totally. You get along with them. There's a good rhythm. You just have uh, very similar philosophies with just business and growth and all this. So that checks all those boxes. Um, But he's, I think in the IV therapy business, that just opened up kind of more light bulbs. He's a lawyer. And so he's kind of stopped being a lawyer and he's gone the entrepreneurial route. And so now that IV therapy, I think you just start having conversations with doctors and this light bulb, let me start men's health all over the news, semi-glutide, right? The diabetic uh, medication. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with Yeah, the, right? um, what's like it called? Like Elon Musk is taking it, the Kardashians. Everybody's taking, taking it. Everybody's taking it. Taking it. Uh, what, is, what, what is the thing called? Semi-glutide? It yeah, is, but it was, it was uh, what are they calling? Oh yeah, the, it's a, like a scientific, some fancy name that I. Yeah, remember. they're like pushing it. Um, yeah, I know. I, a, a few few of my friends are on this thing. Are yeah. you taking it? No, I'm not taking it. Yeah, because you can't eat on it. And I need to eat. I like to work out. Yeah. <laughs> I can't not eat. Uh, but he was taking it. And so that's how it was born. He's like, you know, met the right person, took it. It worked for him. Hey, let me start a business out of this. And went down that rabbit hole. Well, if I'm doing this, makes sense to do peptides, hormone replacement, Viagra, Cialis. Then talk to me, Brian. I have this idea. Uh, yes, you know, I like... Pretty much I got my proof of concept because I do all this marketing. I did his website for the IV therapy business. So that conversation began to, instead of hiring as my marketing agency, you want to just join the company? She came to me. I didn't ask for anything. It was his pitch to me. I said, well, hell yeah. <laughs> no brainer. Yes. What's, what's, uh, can you talk about what that deal is? It 50-50? Is it? It's ground floor. And so um, I, I don't know what it's going to turn into. You know, I'm going to, I'll probably, I always start, the conversation begins at an equal seat at the table. So I'm going to start it off like that. If he's hearing, I'm going to ask for equal partnership. <laughs> Whether yeah. or not it turns out to that, I don't know, but that's how the conversation will begin. Yeah. 50, 50. So that's always how it starts. It's always how it starts. 50, 50. Yep. And then you go down from there. Yeah. And then like, okay, state your case, Brian, why you deserve 50, 50. I'm going to state my case. Why you shouldn't get 50, 50 is maybe I have this or, so like some deals there, it, it may be, it may be less. So like the, the mortgage deal, I have 50% of the digital presence, 8% of the parent company, different deal. Cause they have so much existing infrastructure and there's just more costs. It's a much bigger company. I'm not trying to go from zero to 60. I'm trying to take it from 60 to hundred. So where am I within that business kind of uh, timeline? The zero to 60 is a lot more heavy lifting and it's a lot more work and there's no cash flow and it's a shoestring budget. So that's where I have more leverage to ask for 50, 50 equal partnership, but a company that's trying to go maybe 60 to hundred, I don't have as much leverage. They have existing business. They're going to grow with or without me. It's just going to happen, but I'm just going to help you grow faster. I want to be gas on the fire where the zero to 60, I need to build your fire and pour gas on the fire. Mm. 60 to hundred. I just need to pour gas on the fire. And so it's a different kind of compensation package. Dude, that's great. <laughs> that's fucking great. 
Brian, thank you so much, man. I can, um, I, I'm definitely going to be getting in contact with you. Take his course. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, we got to make this, they, this course happen because it's, it's, uh, it's pretty fire. So um, look in here and tell them where they can find you. Find me, InfantechDesigns.com. That's my website. That's pretty much where I'm at. I'm not a big social media person, but that's pretty much where you can find me. <laughs> right on, man. Thank you so much. Brian Hong, everybody. Uh, look him up. This is going to be incredible. And that was our show, Spaghetti on the Wall, brought to you by Leduc Entertainment for all of your digital marketing needs, social media, video. We got you. And you can watch Spaghetti on the Wall, Spotify, Apple Music, Google, YouTube, anywhere where you can find a podcast, man. And we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>